We all agree that performance is very important in our .NET applications, but how exactly do we write performance C Sharp code? If we look at the documentation, it almost always lacks practical use cases. If we turn instead our attention to the experts that talk about C Sharp performance, they usually use a language that not even senior developers fully understand. So overall, things get very confusing when we think in terms of C Sharp performance. But this ends here, because in this video I'll show you some very practical tricks that will boost your app's performance to the stars. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. Performance in our .NET applications. What does this even mean? When we think about it, everything boils down to one single thing and this is memory allocations. So you would ask why? Well, because when we think about memory allocation, it always implies that we put the garbage collector at work. And every time the garbage collector has something to do, it decreases the overall performance of our application. But I think the best way to understand this is to take a look at a very practical use case that you might encounter in your day-to-day -day development work. What we have here is a code that provides a relatable piece of functionality, because virtually in all applications that we work with, at a certain point, we need to perform some operations on strings. And what we have here is this very, very basic CSV formatted strings where we have a name and then we have an age. And one possible functionality for this would be to kind of like calculate the average age of the employees in this string. Now to do this, we have here this very simple implementation where we need to uh, keep track of the sum of the age and the number of the employees to be able to calculate the average. And then we use here the string reader because we want to read all or we want to read this string line by line. While we read this string line by line, there is another thing that we need to do if we stick to the strings example. So we need to split the strings like we need to split each line based on the comma so that we know that in the second part of that line we have the age which is parsable to an integer and that's exactly what we do here and we add this to the age sum and then obviously we also increase the number of the employees and last but not least we return the average of those now let's try to understand exactly where memory allocations happen in this example if we look at this uh, here obviously we have this int we have this var and we have this string builder and that's the first piece of memory allocation that i would like to go into because this creates a new instance of the string reader which obviously is a reference type so it will allocate memory on the heap which will need to be garbage collected but then what we do here is we go through everything here line by line now when we read lines so when we read each each line each line is virtually a string on its own so this means that each line will be allocated on memory and this means in turn that it will need to be garbage collected but it doesn't really end here because what we do afterwards is we take the line and we split it so it will result in an array of two different strings which all of those two different strings are new strings so therefore they will be allocated and they need to be garbage collected so what if we could perform exactly the same logic but without allocating any memory well that's actually possible so meet the span of t class and i know it might sound a little bit overwhelming because if you go back to the documentation regarding the span of t class you would find some examples or some definitions that are really very hard to understand. For instance, according to the official documentation, the span of T is an allocation-free representation of contiguous regions of arbitrary memory. Wait, what? Forget the documentation, let me show you a better explanation of what spans are and how they work. Let's imagine that this entire part is some piece of memory. And within this bigger piece of memory, we know that in this specific location, we have a specific string. Now, when we use the string.split, for instance, it takes this string and splits it into an array of new strings. And since they are new strings, those will be allocated in the same memory. The span on the other side just knows that we are interested in this specific part of memory where we have the string. And then we can use the span to actually peek into some portions of that specific memory by simply specifying an index where we should start and how much we want to read. But this is brought back to us still as memory, not as a string. And therefore, no allocation. It's similar to reading portions from a stream. A very specific type of span is the read-only span of T, which is a regular span except it is read-only. 
So coming back to our practical use case, let's see if we can refactor the existing functionality in a way that we can use the read-only span of t instead of using this string.split. So let's see if we can implement exactly the same functionality but using the read-only span. To implement this functionality with spans, what we will create here is a new method and we'll call this calculate average with a span. And what we can do in this method, we can simply come and take everything that we have here and then we will rework this entire example. First of all, we have this age sum and number of employees and these are variables that we still need. Now, obviously, we'll also need a string reader because that's kind of like what we need to do. However, things will change here regarding what happens in this while statement. So let me just delete everything here and let's start to kind of like refactor this functionality. Now, one of the first things that we need to do here, we will not use a string anymore for the line so that we avoid the allocation. And what we'll have instead is a read-only span of char. Now, we use the read-only span of char because what we try to do here is to read char by char. Now, the thing is that what we can do here in this while, we can still keep this idea of while line, a string builder will read like not equals null. The only thing is that we need to specify that we want to read this line as span and we do this like that so in this case we will not have a string anymore that will hold the line but we will have a span that will hold the information about the exact place in memory where we have that specific line that we are interested in right now as we discussed earlier to be able to work with span we just need to provide an index where we want to start to read and the length for how long do we want to read that specific memory location. So let's have a variable for this. It would be, I will call this common, uh, comma index because we are interested to know exactly where the comma is. This once again will not instantiate or materialize or allocate a new string. We just specify an index. Now, if we look at our string, we see that we know that after the comma, we have that age and there and, and afterwards, there's nothing else that's of interest for us. What we can do here is we can just simply skip to calculate exactly how for how long do we want to read to actually get the age because after the comma we know that we can read to the end of the line and that would be okay so if we go back here it means that we can already use the span functionality to get information about where exactly in memory that age is stored and to do this, we have this slice method on the spans. And the slice, what it does essentially, well, it starts to read. If we hover the mouse here, I guess we also get information forms a slice out of the current read only span that begins at a specified index. So it means that from the specific line, we want to read or we are interested only in the information that starts at index comma index plus one. And it is not comma index because if I would use just the comma index, then it would include the comma in the slice and I wouldn't want to do that. So it will start by comma index plus one. Now, what we know here, if we take a look at our structured string is that we know that afterwards or where we start to read, we have a number. And this means that we can simply parse this slice of memory into an integer directly. And once again, we slice it to an integer and therefore it will be allocated on the stack. So it will not be a heap allocation. Therefore, this wouldn't also be garbage collected. And obviously the last thing that we need to do is simply the logic of our application. But once again, here what we have, we rely on read-only spans and we never allocate memory for the strings. The only real memory allocations that happens in this method is the allocation for the string reader that we need to actually read all the lines. Now let's prove that the functionality does exactly the same thing as we were doing previously. So I will just come here and I will also console write line the output of this calculate average with span. And then we will run the application. And we see that the result is exactly the same. So the first one gives us a result of 28 and the second one also gives us a result of 28. So from, from a functionality point of view, we are good to go. We have implemented exactly the same functionality, but using read-only spans instead of the regular strings. So how much more performant do you think that this new piece of code is? Let's talk facts and let's benchmark this entire stuff. So let's now compare performance. To do this, we will add here a new class and I will call this class benchmarks. And I have already insta installed benchmark.net, so we need to set up everything here right now. So the first thing that we need to do is we will need this variable here. So let's go back to the benchmarks. Obviously here it's not var, it is will be private string. 
because this is right now a regular field and it's called employees and what we can do here is now move the both of the methods that we have previously in our other class we'll just copy it move to the benchmark class and let's implement these methods here now, obviously what we need to do for things to work in this class is we need to declare them as public so it would be public double calculate average and also public double calculate average age with span we have this functionality now the only thing that we need to do here is to specify that these are our benchmarks and also let's use the same attribute on the second method and the last thing that i would like to set up for the benchmark i would also like to use the memory diagnoser so i'll go just here and say that i want to use the memory diagnoser well, and we are already in release mode. I guess what we can do here, we can come back to this program and now we can get rid of these two methods because we don't really need them anymore. Actually, we can get rid of everything here because we don't need it. And what we can do instead is we have this benchmark runner dot run and we want to run the benchmarks class and we need to add this using so that we are good to go. So we want to run this benchmarks we are good to go we are already in release let's check again but we should be in release yes we are in release so let's run the application and evaluate the results okay so benchmarks are ready so let's take a look into it now first of all we see that calculate average age kind of like tens 1.593 uh, nanoseconds or 1593 nanoseconds while the calculate average age with span takes only 600 nanoseconds so just by using read only spans instead of regular strings we have doubled our performance or more than doubled the performance of our application and if we think about the reason why this method is way faster than this calculate average age we can take a look at the memory allocation and we see that both in gen 0 and both overall we have far less memory allocated so if we look at the entire allocated memory we see that Without span, so with regular string, we have 912 bytes, while with the read-only span, we only have 280 bytes. So theoretically, you can go right now and look in the code bases where you are currently working on, and I am sure that you will find enough places where you use either the string.split or string substring methods and every time you see those being used, you can potentially refactor that using the read-only span and make your application more performant just like this. It's that easy. However, please note that there are also some limitations when using spans. And all these limitations come from the fact that those spans are implemented as ref structs. The first limitation that comes with this is that we cannot use read-only spans or spans in general as fields or properties on classes because classes are reference types and we cannot use read-only spans that are ref structs as properties or fields on those classes. The second limitation that also derives from this is that we cannot use spans inside lambda expressions. And last but not least, another very important limitation is that we cannot use spans in an async and await context. Still, in our day-to-day -day work, I'm sure there are plenty of examples or places in our code bases where we could still refactor our code using the read-only span or a span and making everything more performant. Cool, so I guess we can call it a day now. If you think this video was useful for you, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video so that you make it easier to discover for others that might it find it useful as well. And if you're for the first time on this channel, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you are always notified whenever there is new content here on the channel. Also, if you have any type of question or if you just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section of this video and leave your comment, ask your question, and I will be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.